right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, tonight, we're going to be, we've got a string of uh, uh, bourbons that I personally have not drank before. And I bought this bottle, fuck, at this point, like two months ago. And I've been sitting on it, all because Steven's whiny ass keeps saying, oh, we need to do more things that you haven't drank. We haven't do, mo- we got to do more things you haven't drank. And I'm right. Dude, uh, you, sound ju- you sound just like him, dude. Yeah, it, you know the difference. I don't I'm have a. Steven. Yeah, exactly. I don't have the hair. You have the I same don't... haircut, right? I don't... <laughs> but I don't. I don't have the perfectly quaffed white boy racist haircut that you two have. There you go. I think you for the word. Here's my Stephen hair. Thank you for the word perfect. Actually, Ryan, you look damn good right there. Actually, like if you got an ear piercing right there, you'd be a heartthrob. <laughs> be like Johnny Depp and uh. Nightmare on Elm Street. I do your Ryan. Fucking this is old son of a bitch. He fucking. <laughs> he, I I hope he dies. I'm gonna go to his funeral because he asked me a question. Make sure you include no. something that makes you uh makes everybody question your intelligence and wonder how you function and got this far in life and then they remember that your dad has built such strong rails <laughs> on which your life is held <laughs> that you can only go so far off track. <laughs> 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 his life has the bumpers from a bowling alley <laughs> uh, hey, I've it's almost impossible to gutter ball <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck so anyway are. yeah and here we are <laughs> so back I, to bourbon I, I just i just wish i had you know some chances in life to excel <laughs> <laughs> I wish you had any to fail, <laughs> just to humble your ass. <laughs> okay, so back to bourbon. <laughs> uh, tonight, we're going to be drinking this. Uh, it's Stellum Bourbon. Uh, this is a release from the same people that do... Uh, it's from Barrel Craft Spirits. Um, this is a... Uh, they They like to play it up, but really what it is, is it's a less expensive bottle... Um, that they can produce more of more quickly. Um, just like everything else from Barrel, it is sourced. Uh, Stellum Bourbon is sourced from, uh, we don't know the distilleries, but an Indiana distillery, maybe MGP. Um, also, it's got some Tennessee whiskey in it, and it's got some Kentucky bourbon in it. Um, but it is labeled as a bourbon, uh, so even that Tennessee whiskey has to be... Uh, I mean, it's probably a Dickel product. Let's let's be honest here. Um, but before we do anything else, what do you think of that label? This is not a this is not a real looker. Um, it kind of has that bullet aspect to it, where it's like so minimal and the label's low on it, or kind of like if you stripped all the interesting characteristics from like Smoke Wagon Small Batch, like. You made it just just make it a plain bottle and then also the label don't put any texture on it don't really put any character or words on it just kind of slap it on there it's that the lower label the label speaks for itself kind of attitude but it doesn't mm-hmm. speak for itself it's just looks unfinished it looks like a placeholder for the real label that said it is not an unpleasant like you know font and color like it doesn't hurt your eyes to read you know what mm-hmm. it is so because of that i'm going to give it a two because giving it a one puts it on the same par as like what i gave like jesse james outlaw whiskey which looks tacky which is worse to me than just being overly simple so i'm just giving it a two it's definitely not going to wow you from the label um and it's the the barrel folks on the barrel products i feel like they look okay at least the the mm-hmm. bottle shape is the most unique part but the labels are always kind of neat and they're like in sort of like a shield badgy kind of area. Um, so it, it surprises me a little bit that they didn't have something that stood out a little bit more for this product. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. Just a two out of ten. Yeah, I can I can fully support that. And um, I want to throw out there like th- this looks like a label that I could print on my home printer. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. The quality is about what my home printer would put out to yeah. like um like i bought the bottle it's seriously been sitting on my shelf i've the only thing that's missing is the stuff that i shipped off to you guys like like i have not tried this at all yeah i noticed because, you poured it all the way to the top 
<laughs> oh yeah I, I don't accurate i like I, I try to accurately measure but let's be real here i don't care that much um but yeah so i mean like 16 uh, eight ounces of it got lost uh eight ounces to ryan eight ounces to steven and then that's what's left here um and the only reason i bring that up is that in that minimal amount of uh handling you can see like there's white like the it's started to peel there it's white around the, all of the edges it's just a it's just a really low quality label um and i'm not the label guy so i don't give a shit generally speaking but i think but i think that does support your your two rating on that label Stephen. Yeah. Um, i do wonder after having talked to you know alan bishop before in a previous episode i kind of wonder if this is because of the time it came out this is the first time they're releasing it I wonder if they were already experiencing or anticipating some sort of like issues. I wonder if this is basically is a placeholder, kind of like I suggested for a mm -hmm. better label. So we'll see if over time it it kind of improves. But yeah, the bar the barrel the barrel like their main line they're pretty cool bottles, right? Oh yeah, here let me yeah, yeah. I'll grab yeah one. that's what I was saying. It kind of surprises me a little bit um, that this product is just so it, it's an afterthought. Yeah, so here's the barrel seagrass label. And then here is one of their high end uh, private releases. Um, very cool. Like that's actually like even on the barrel seagrass, which is a mass, pretty much a mass produced item. There's handwriting on there. It's not font look to look like handwriting. There's actually people somebody that's their job is to write numbers on labels. Um, so yeah, pretty high quality labels. Yeah. Generally like I speaking. said, I think those look like badges and I think they, they're like cool ways of labeling the bottle and they're very clear, like barrel seagrass, you know, when you see that on the shelf immediately. Yep. Yeah. I, I feel like all these smaller distilleries must get the same bottle from the same like glass manufacturer because every kind of, you know, like middle to low tier distillery, just based on size and sales, all have that same exact bottle, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? or similar yeah yeah like it, it's always tall and kind of skinnier kind of looks like uh like the shape of like a pappy bottle or something mm -hmm. this to me has the the look of like a eight dollar wine or something like that like if you're just like walking down and it's like almost like a friend made their own wine or something like that like a super low budget like distiller that's what it looks like it's funny you say that because i was honestly thinking that like this is the label that somebody that home distills making moonshine and then aging it would actually use um yeah so anyway um i've heard great things about what we're about to sip though but just a, a few notes i already mentioned that it's from barrel i mentioned that it's sourced from an indiana distillery a kentucky distillery and a tennessee distillery um so we have no idea what the mash bills used are there is no age statement nobody like super smart has even like sat down and said we think it's about this age well, that's what we're going to do tonight oh no <laughs> no um but i do have to say that this is a very high proof bourbon we're about to drink i don't know if you guys knew that or not but it's 114.98 so it's almost 115 proof okay um and you would, I would not expect that out of this bottle with this label. I would not expect it to be a high proofer. Maybe I that's was what expecting they're going it to for. be 90. Yeah, maybe that's what they're going for, just to, you know, knock you off your feet. Like, oh, this is really good, even though the bottle doesn't look like it will be. We're going to get you drunk real fast, and you'll forget how ugly the label is. <laughs> that's yeah, possibility. But what do you say we uh, dive into the to the juice, the liquor? liquor. Let's do it. Cheers. 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 Got to say, I love the nose. Yeah, it's nice. It doesn't smell 115 proof to me. Uh, you really have to inhale to get that. It is like distinct. It's got a lot of sweetness it, to it. Yeah, it's like an apple, like caramel apple-y type smell to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with I'm, caramel apple hardcore. Yeah, caramel, and then like I'm getting the standard caramel vanilla oak. Um, yeah, 
and maybe yeah and i can see the apple too like the um the smell of a caramel apple and the apple itself is like a granny smith like that that type of an apple i'm gonna sip it because this smells goddamn good it's also got a little fig note to it i think like a little fig newton oh i like Oh, I like that a lot. You know, I got to say, my first, the first flavor I pick up is also kind of like a fig. First flavor I got was clove. Oh, yeah. That's spicy. It is. I didn't think it, it would be. I'm smelling it like you don't really get that baking spice, but when you sip it, it's a long, spicy finish. It to me, it's also got like that Granny Smith apple flavor to it. Yeah, with a lot of caramel notes, a lot of vanilla, cinnamon, some cinnamon for sure. I was about to say, but it's got that. It it's got a very very Granny Smith apple flavor to it. It also tastes a little bit like wild berry pop tarts. I've never had a wild berry pop. I, so I can't speak to that. Well, I mean, I don't that's know. like the, that's like the blue and pink one or whatever, right? Yeah, the blue and purple or whatever. But it's like I don't know what a wild berry is, but it basically, I guess, it's just kind of a it's a menagerie of like different different berries. So mm -hmm. like blueberry, raspberry, probably like blackberry in there. It's, I get a lot of berry too, in addition to the spice. Mm -hmm. I still like there's still a finish i mean i took a sip like a minute and a half ago yeah and it's a nice finish too and it, it, it like changes over like it to me the finish goes from one thing to another like when i first have my sip i'm getting all of that well first thing i get it was like a a, a very spicy rye flavor on the finish and then it switches and I get more fruit. And then at the end, I'm still getting like the sweetness left over. The, the, the caramel sweetness, the vanilla sweetness. It's almost like a marshmallowy texture to it too. This is a fucking winner in my opinion. Just like this podcast. What are we, number one on iTunes, right, Steven? Yeah, uh, that's uh, 3,001, which is still pretty good. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking podcasts. I just hope we're beating like Jim Rome's podcast. Is it just Rome is Burning? Is that what it's called? <laughs> Probably. Because that's he got one name, and he's like, that's all I need. He's like, it's mm -hmm. pretty fucking good, right? And people yeah. are like, to this day, they're just like, oh, it's Rome is Burning again? He goes, yeah, it's pretty fucking good, right? Like, <laughs> after like 30 years, he's still... I would there was a video like it was on my youtube feed it was him talking about urban mile of uh, urban meyer and he's like this is despicable <laughs> i mean just, come on oh, yeah hilarious i cracked myself up <laughs> <laughs> who was it that punched him on his show or like assaulted him chris was it chris everett or no he called him chris it was jim everett or some something everett he was a football player Jim Everett was a, foot, a quarterback. Yeah, that's who it was then. Okay. And he called him Chris Everett because she's a tennis player. Some, yeah. And yeah. he was popular at the time. And he's like, you say that one more time, I'm going to tackle you. <laughs> Jim, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, Jim. Thank you. Check that. Chris Everett, good to have you on the show. You know what? You know, you've been calling me that for about the last five years. About two years, actually, Chris. Well, hey, you know what? Let me, let me say one thing. In that game, how many sacks did I have that we came back and won? How many sacks did yeah, you have? Yeah, how many games? How many sacks? It was, see, but this was back in 1989. Okay, that was see, you about may, you may have even been Jim Everett back there, but somewhere along the way, Jim, you ceased being Jim and you became Chris. Well, let me tell you a little secret. That 
you know, we're sitting here right now, and if you guys want to take a station break, you can. But if you call me, Chris Everett, to my face one more time. I already did it twice. Better, you better, you can call one more time, we better st take a station break. Well, it's a five-minute segment, our five-segment show. We got a long way to go. Well, we do. We got a long way to go. We do. I'll get a couple segments out of well, you before. it's good to be here with you, though. Well, it's good you to know, see you, too. because you've been talking like this behind my back for a long but time. But now I said it right here. Right, exactly. Well, we got no problem well, I with think that. It, I think that you, you probably won't say it again. I bet I do. Okay. Chris? <laughs> that guy's such a douchebag. Hey, I do have big news from the podcast from TikTok. So the other day, I used our theme song in a TikTok. Multiple people have complimented us on our theme song and one guy even used the theme song in a video of his own and like the, the whole like thing across the front of it was i love this this music and i was like that's badass because we do have in my opinion the single best theme of any podcast out there like, I don't know of a single better, I mean, I don't listen to podcasts, but <laughs> I was gonna say, what is, we have to qualify this somehow. Like what's but, our pedigree here? But to me, we've got the best theme of any podcast out there. If you would have said bourbon podcast, I probably would agree. But I mean, to say all podcasts, fuck do that. you know about a podcast that has a better theme than us? Yeah. Which Your mom's one? house podcast is pretty fucking good. <laughs> that song is pretty fucking good. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> well, the, Who it, is Randy? It's just no. good. It's a bunch of like their show memes that are like wrapped up in it along with just like kind of like a, a house music type type background. It's pretty it's pretty good. And it's better than ours? Yeah. Just to name one. I mean. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Can but you I, name 10 better than us? Yeah, I probably could. But, Fuck. But. Not in the bourbon world. I think we're killing okay. it in our segment, in our lane. And that's all that matters, really. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But I thought it was pretty cool that our, like, our theme song is currently getting more attention than our actual podcast is. But <laughs> <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it, it Can we something. file a copyright against that dude? I think we should uh, send a cease and desist. That's no. how you get big. The first guy to talk about <laughs> you, you immediately sue him. <laughs> 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 oh dan while we're talking about I, I feel like i'm gonna forget this again if i don't mention it now but we're having a high proof whiskey tonight i've been drinking a high proof whiskey all week forgot to mention mm. this last week but i bought some makers 46 cast strength i don't know if it ever made it on the an episode that we did or not but you had been recommending to us anyway uh makers 46 cast strength you said it was one of the best bottles of the year you felt and uh, i'd have to agree it's really, really good. And uh, for something that like is not too hard to find, it's uh it's definitely one to look out for for everybody who's in the in the liquor aisle. One hundred percent. To me, it is I don't know if I told you guys or who I've mentioned it to, but so Maker's Mark forty six cask strength is an annual release. They do it every year. Um and Maker's Mark 46 cask strength is always a good bottle. To me, this year is exceptional. It is like like the 2021 Maker's Mark 46 cask strength is going to be one that five years from now, you look back on and you're just like, holy shit, that was a good bottle. I wish I had another bottle of that to like carry me through. Because in my opinion, it's that fucking good. Yeah, it's just it's everything that you should be looking for in a whiskey or a bourbon. There, there's a limited makers out right now that I've seen at some of my stores. I haven't like really like looked at it. I wonder if it it's, is that. No, it's strength. no, it's FAE 02. It's uh, every year the, since uh, 2019, they've been doing it's called a wood finishing series. It started off with RC6, which is a stave combination. And then last year was SE4 PR5. And then this year in spring was FAE01. And they decided to do two this year. So there's 
spring was FAE 01, fall is FAE 02. That's the one that you're almost certainly talking about. Okay. And the FAE 01, I haven't had the FAE 02, but the 01 was trash. Like it was, um, everybody that I, that I know of that had it and that was their first of the makers wood finishing series they were all like oh this is really good everybody who had had se4 pr5 or rc6 are like this one is trash compared to 2019 and 2020 um and that's exactly how i feel about it don't i mean of course i have a bottle of it and a backup bottle of 01 sitting over there but if I see a bottle of O2, yes, I'm going to buy one bottle, but I won't buy a second bottle until I find out how good it is. If it's the same as O1, I'll I'll pass on having a second. One thing I wanted to say about Maker's 46 cast strength is to me it tastes like almost nothing like Maker's 46. Um, you don't think so? No, only a very only by a very little bit. There's obviously always like I'm not saying it's totally unique. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. always like you know you can kind of tell it's Maker's forty forty six or you can tell it's Maker's or something, but yeah, for the most part, I pick up entirely different things from. Yeah. So that is just to say um, that in in my opinion, even if maybe you've had Maker's forty six and you were so so about it in the past, to any listeners, um, still consider giving Cast Strength a try. Um, the only the only kind of feeling I have on, I just, I, I guess my, my, the only reason I wouldn't pick it up again is if you just feel like you've had a lot of cast strength barrel proof stuff lately, of which I feel like there's a lot right now. Um, so I, I think it's possible to get just like overwhelmed on the palate and people are just maybe looking for something that's a little lower hitter, or like a, a mixer of some kind or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I've, I've mentioned to you, Stephen, and probably Ryan, too, that and, and we talked about this af before and after, actually, uh, Stephen, that I put Maker's Mark 46 cast strength this year's release on par with Antique 107. And I'm not saying that they are a reasonable facsimile of one another. They are different experiences. They are different flavors. They are. Um, yeah, they're they're very different. It's not that you pick up the same notes and it's not this, that you pick up the same characteristics, but I'm saying that if you think Weller 107 is a 9.0, I'm saying that a Maker's 46 cast strength is a 9.0. Like, like it's that good. Now, speaking of Weller, I did pick up a, a, a special one earlier this week the on Friday. CYPB. I did. You cracked uh, it open yet? I have not. I have not. We'll do an and episode this, on it too. So, And this is the 2021 and I've never had the 2021 release. I've had 2020. Every year it changes slightly because they keep refining it to be more and more like what craft your own craft your perfect bourbon is. So each year is a little bit different of a release um i can tell you based on the 2020 that if unless 2021 is significantly better i'll be glad that i only paid 45 dollars for it i was not a fan of the 2020 once i actually had it and it was really high on my list i know and i remember then, you saying it was like your most desired bourbon you had not had yeah yeah, it was it was way up there. And then I was talking to Ryan from Dean's about it. He goes, well, shit, if you want to pour a 2020, hold on a second. And he went to the back and he had a three quarters full bottle from 2021. He brought it out or from 2020. He goes, I don't see what the hype is about. And I tried a sip of it and it was a whole lot of alcohol flavor to it. The only thing that was neat about the 2020 was that I got a whole bunch of peaches. Like whenever I sipped it, it was like, wow, that's really like, like that's got a really strong peach note to it. And that's really uncommon. 
in bourbon. So that was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so we'll see how the 2021 is. And hopefully I'm like, yes, this was a steal. Not like, ah, oh, I'm glad I only paid this much for it. Yeah, I was just <laughs> looking up the Stellum label for the rye that they have. It's green. It's just green. It's the exact same thing with green. It's exactly. the exact same thing. It's green. And instead of bourbon, it says rye. Yeah, it's like the... Uh, <laughs> That's it. It's like the Arrested Development meme where he's just like, I don't know what I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's green. And it's like a St. Patrick's Day green. Is it like neon green? <laughs> no, it's like I can. No, I can hold on. Yeah, show it, please. <clears throat> can you see that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really like is the same if you squint it, it's almost the same as the blue. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like if you had one eye that was blue and one eye that was green, you wouldn't know the difference. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's a joke. But I, co- I color joke. <laughs> Oh, you Bl- the color people. blindness, dude. Oh, I thought you were talking about a heterochromia or whatever. <laughs> like Max Scherzer has, where he has different color eyes. Yeah. yeah. That's like, what I thought he meant, too. I was like, what fucking difference would it make? Yeah. Your own eye color doesn't impact <laughs> the colors you see, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you got brown eyes, that's all you see is brown. <laughs> Your dad loses so much money every time you talk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, what do you say we go ahead and bring it back to bourbon and uh, talk about Stellum? Yeah. Give it a rating. Uh, anybody want to go first? I'll, I'll go first. All right. Let's hear it. I'm going to give it an 8.8. Wow. Yeah, I liked it a wow. lot. That's a solid wow. score. It really is. And I think it's, again, I value like really highly um, something being unique having a unique note to it. Um, and the, the entire time I was drinking this, I just couldn't liken it to anything else I've drank. Um, not quite. So that to me, I, it's pleasant on the nose. It's a pleasant on the palate. It, there's a good finish to it, but none of it is ever overwhelming. None of it is ever, it doesn't, none of it ever strikes me in is like, I can't point to a, a a gathering or a situation where I wouldn't want to drink this. Basically, mm-hmm. it lends itself well to whatever. And again, we're sitting here. We've been talking. I'm not even going to be able to use all of it, but we've been talking about movies and and comedians and stuff like that. And I can just sip it, and it's a great just sipper as I'm as I'm talking with you guys. Which I would not say something about like like that about like Stag Junior, for instance. Mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. one that demands your attention. It needs to be the focus when you're drinking it. This goes along well with conversation, but if you sit there and pick apart all the notes, it's still excellent. So I give it an 8.8 because to me, it's it didn't knock my socks off though. I think it's very, very good. And I wanted it to reflect that in my score, but it, but it didn't get into my hollowed ground of like a 9.0 or higher because I don't see myself immediately going out and buying this bottle or trying to buy this bottle. But if I ever saw it, I would definitely remember this experience. So yeah. 8.8. All right. Ryan, you want to go next? Or you want me to? Yeah, I can go. I think it's a great fall bourbon. You know, everything, you know, Halloween coming up and everything. It's like a, like we said, a caramel apple, a Granny Smith apple, but you get, you get shades of cinnamon and a lot of baking spice. Every time you have a sip, it tastes like something else. It's very complex. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, judging on the bottle, when I saw it, I was a little skeptical. You know, you can't really, you know, you're not supposed to judge something. But when you see a label that just kind of half-assed, you think twice about it. And I, judging on how cool their barrel bottles are, I feel like it's an intentional ploy on their part to kind of like punch you right in the face and say, no, we can make a good bourbon and our bottle doesn't have to look cool because it really doesn't. I loved all the notes. I thought it was, you know, like I thought it was sometimes like on some of the sips overly spicy. So I'm going to go a little bit lower than Steven, but still a very good score. I'm going to go an 8.4 and 
good sipper, like Steven said, you sip it and that finish stays with you. You know, even, I mean, I, I went like five minutes not taking a sip and I still felt like I took a set, a sip 30 seconds ago, which is, which says a lot about how good it is. Yeah. So I want, I want to reiterate that this is, so Barrel Craft Spirits, when they did this, this was an attempt to put more product out faster in a less expensive form, right? Which, so if, if that means that, so this was a 50 or $55 bottle, something like that. If that means that it's got a cheap label, I'm fine with that. If that means that it's nothing about it is fancy and that it's readily available on the shelf at all the time because they can like push through it much faster. I'm fucking on board because this really surprised me with how good it is. I would take this over a bottle of standard barrel bourbon anytime. I think this is better than standard oh. standard barrel bourbon. Um, now, when it comes to rank, ranking it or rating it, I'm still going to go just a little bit lower than uh, Steven also. Uh, but I do think it's fucking phenomenal. I think it's an 8.6. Um, so it... I think we're all on board with right where like it's negligible the difference between the three of us right um but I think it's really good I think that it deserves to be on your shelf especially at 50 to 55 bucks um I think it's I think it's a great pour really great pour Another bourbon song Another bourbon song Another He did a, he wrote like a book after um, doing the movie with just more story about the characters. So um, hopefully I start that this week. Wow, I didn't think you read. Oh, it's an audio book. All the traffic I sit in. Oh, I, I yeah. Read. I should have. Yeah. yeah, I should have <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not reading a fucking book. All right. <laughs>